There probably is no more graphic an illustration of just how bad the coronavirus crisis is hitting India than this. This is a makeshift crematorium. It's actually not meant to exist. This has been set up by the residents around here who cannot cope with the number of dead. Behind me are all the funeral pyres that represent a mother, a father, a daughter, a, a, a son, an uncle, a loved one to someone, a friend to someone. Each one of those fires is a coronavirus death. And we have been watching in the, just the last few minutes alone, they've been coming in virtually every second. They simply can't cope. Uh, and this is not one of the official funeral sites. This is a, an ad hoc one. One, they're bringing in the wood as we wait to, to prepare for yet more casualties coming in. And this is on top of the official sites, remember. Many of these people don't feel that they're represented in the country's statistics. They feel even though India is facing not just a grim spike, it's almost like a consistent wall of coronavirus cases and deaths. They reckon this is just what one economist called the tip of an iceberg. But underneath that terrible grim statistic showing the huge number of cases and possibly the deaths that, that will follow, there's a much, much bigger, worse case scenario of uh, numbers, who knows how many, who are unaccounted for, who are unlogged as coronavirus casualties, coronavirus cases, coronavirus deaths. We heard in just today, I think it's been very much compounded by the government, the local governments, the local authorities, very much being unprepared to cope with this second surge, of which they had plenty of warning following as they were a cycle behind many other countries who were suffering their second surge, not least Britain. They instead were embarked on a number of political rallies, all of them attracting hundreds, thousands of people. Their vaccine uh, has rollout has been a little bit, well, uh, uh, difficult to describe it uh, as anything other than slightly chaotic, although they are vaccinating an awful lot of people. Because this country is so populous, it's actually less only a few percent of people who are actually vaccinated and whilst they're still determinedly trying to roll out their vaccination they haven't prepared for this huge spike and this huge sudden spike which means that many of the hospitals particularly in the north of the country in where i am in new delhi the capital and other areas in the north they have been left wanting for oxygen. They have been left seeing that there is not enough oxygen supply, which we know is, is so critical for coronavirus patients. There is, as you can imagine, an awful lot of um, grief, an awful lot of, of anger and shock that they've been left in this position. They held a, a, a religious festival which attracted something like 10 million devotees. And all those people may well have been super spreaders or could be infected or certainly a large number may well have been infected and have been asked to go into isolation. And this is going on 24-7 right now. They are the fires that simply do not stop burning. They're also predicting that the peak has yet to come. It may not come until the middle of May. So these terribly, terribly bad statistics of the number of cases followed by an increasing slow increase in the number of deaths could well become an awful lot worse. And Alex, um, tell us about the reaction from people in India to how slow the government's been in trying to put up an uh, uh, extra infrastructure. I know uh, Prime Minister Modi ha held a meeting just two days ago about uh, the shortage of oxygen in hospitals. Too little, too late, perhaps, for the people there. Prime Minister Modi himself has been the object of much criticism because he has been at an attendant and a leader of many of these political rallies. There are a number of elections going on across India. 
And as one Delhi resident told me, it, if you've got an election going on in your area, you pretty much, and you're a politician, you seem to be telling everyone there's no coronavirus. In Delhi, there is no election, and that is why there seems, it seems to, uh, the politicians and perhaps the residents are much more open in showing that there is a terrible spread of coronavirus. They simply can't seem to be able to cope with it right now. And they're also coping with a number of different variants. They, they, they are blaming, in many cases, the national disease of um, central control in India, seems to be blaming the British variant for having come and mutated here. And they're very much putting the blame on the British variant for causing this dramatic surge in India. So there is an awful lot of criticism, an awful towards the government authorities and certain political parties. There's, there's a lot of squabbling belief between the political parties so, who are in charge of different states, who, some of whom are blaming rival political parties for hindering the, the spread of oxygen supplies to fellow rivals. And the High Court met today to impose very strict ruling that if anyone is found to be restricting oxygen supplies, they could face a death sentence to try and stop this happening. We were outside a queue, a very long queue, in the centre uh, of, of the capital of private citizens who were lining up, having bought their own oxygen cylinders to fill them up to treat um, their relatives at home. Because a lot of the people that we were speaking to today are very fearful about trying to take any sick relative into a hospital, which uh, many of whom are saying they cannot cope and they haven't got the oxygen supplies to keep their relatives alive. In one hospital alone today in Delhi, 25 COVID patients died for lack of oxygen, according to the hospital administrators. These are all terribly frightening statistics for the residents in this area and throughout the country. And as I say, there's a very deep worry that this could be far, far worse. If it's happening in the capital, it could be far, far worse out in the rural areas.